Hey everybody, welcome back to Medicine Deconstructed. I'm your host, Dr. Jay Rutland. Listen, you guys have seen the news, you guys have watched the news. You can see on the TV screen, you can see people talking about COVID and asthma. Does it actually carry a risk? This is an important question. Me being a pulmonologist, I need to know. Also, me being a critical care physician, am I actually seeing asthma patients or severe asthma patients in the intensive care unit? We're gonna answer those questions and some of your thoughts today. Okay, first of all, we always have to go back. You know me, I like to talk about normal. So under normal circumstances, what is your lung doing? When you take that big breath of air in, that air is traveling through your trachea here and then through your big pipes called bronchi. Those bronchi further break down into little pipes called bronchioles. Those bronchioles are surrounded by smooth muscle. Those bronchioles then carry that air down to the alveoli or to the balloons that are stacked on top of one another. So what is asthma? Asthma is inflammation of those pipes. So when those pipes are inflamed, that muscle is going to contract or constrict. That's where that wheezing sound comes from. And how do we treat patients with asthma? We treat them with inhalers first and foremost. Inhalers help dilate that smooth muscle and they don't allow that pipe to constrict. Furthermore, we might have to upregulate their management with steroids or inhaled steroids to calm down that inflammation, not allowing it to cause your muscle to constrict. Remember, the pandemic is SARS coronavirus, which is an RNA virus that causes COVID-19, the illness. We know what happens when people contract SARS-CoV-2. As a result of its presence within the lungs, it actually leads to the cellular recruitment of white blood cells in the bronchioles, in the alveoli or balloons of the lung, and that ends up clogging up the lung, causing a lot of inflammation of the lung, and not allowing your lung to do its job. When you think about SARS-CoV-2, one of the risk factors that we thought was actually having asthma. Well, here's the thing, even though about 9% of the US population has asthma, and it looks like within SARS-CoV-2, 14% of those patients have asthma. It doesn't necessarily mean that that's a risk factor. And in fact, when you compare health to asthmatics, there is no significant risk factor when you actually have asthma. Remember what I had mentioned previously, you treat asthma with inhaled corticosteroids and beta agonists. Again, these are both medicines that one, are going to allow that bronchial to dilate, to let air get through that pipe to get into your balloons, okay? The inhaled cortical steroid calms down inflammation. The beta agonist allows that smooth muscle to not contract, so it stays dilated and stays open. Remember, SARS-CoV-2, as it enters the nasal epithelium and your lung, it's going to bind to a receptor on the epithelial cells called ACE2R, angiotensin converting enzyme receptor 2. Once it binds to that receptor with the spike protein, it then uses our own protease. Most of the time it's a protease called TMPRSS2. When that protease cleaves the membrane of SARS-CoV-2, it allows the virus to enter that cell. So obviously, if you have more ACE2R around, you've got more substrate for the virus to bind to to enter your cells and you become infected. People who are on inhaled cortical steroids, when you look at this study in which they looked at sputum expressions of the receptors that SARS-CoV-2 uses to enter your cell, so we're talking ACE2R and TMPRSS2, Inhaled cortical steroids downregulate that gene expression. That means that there's less substrate for SARS coronavirus to bind to. But hold on, when you look at patients with asthma, right, the people that have increased expression of the TMPRSS2 and the ACE2R are African Americans, people with diabetes, and people with hypertension. These are also the same population of patients who do have severe disease. Now, diabetes and hypertension, scientifically, will probably come up with an explanation as to why African-Americans having disease 
Who knows? Could be a little bit of racial disparities there. I don't know for sure, but that's me. And so I do worry about that because that's my kids as well. So for my asthmatics in my clinic that come to see me on a daily basis, I make certain that they are on their inhaled cortical steroid and their long acting beta agonist because it looks like it may actually help. What you've seen recently is a doctor named Richard Bartlett in Texas who has said budesonide, which is an inhaled cortical steroid, cures COVID-19. Now, he's not all the way wrong, but he's also not all the way right. Remember, I'm not trying to be right. I'm just trying to get it right. There is literature that supports his claim that budesonide does, in fact, treat SARS-CoV-2. There's also literature to support that another inhaled cortical steroid called seclesonide also inhibits SARS-CoV-2. What does that inhaled cortical steroid actually do? Well, this has led to new research or old research because in 2003, when the first SARS coronavirus pandemic was at play in China, we started to realize that there was an endoribonuclease protein that was present within the virus called NSP15, that this protein was extremely important as it pertains to SARS-CoV-2 survival within the cells. What we think the protein actually does is it ends up cleaving some double-stranded RNA, which can be used as markers in the cell, and it can warn the immune system that, hey, this cell is infected. So we actually see that seclesonide may actually inhibit NSP15 from doing that. Therefore, it leads to less replication of SARS coronavirus type 2. And this has led to a new wave of research. And in fact, there's a couple of companies out there that are studying four molecules that inhibit NSP15. And they want to see the SARS coronavirus type 2 survival. So this is really exciting literature. It's a really exciting time in science. It's a really exciting time in SARS coronavirus type 2 because we're starting to see the light, so to speak. So what I want you guys to take away from this are a couple of things. Number one, asthma may not exactly be a risk factor for severe SARS coronavirus infections or COVID-19. Two, Inhaled cortical steroids may downregulate that substrate that leads to that binding of SARS coronavirus. So they may actually help you a little bit. I'm not suggesting they're a cure because I don't think that they are, but I do think that they might help. The third and final thing is yes, if you have hypertension, if you're diabetic, if you're African American like I am, unfortunately, we have higher risk of developing severe SARS coronavirus infections and severe COVID-19. Listen, we're moving to that new wave of research and NSP15 may be extremely important. It's important that we continue to look at this protein, continue to look at the different viral particles to see if inhibiting not only NSP15, but other endoribonucleases may lead to a cure. Hopefully we get that one day and hopefully it's soon because like you guys, I need my kids to go back to school. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate you guys watching until the end. Please watch other videos. If you have ideas of content or if there's a lingering question that you have, leave it in the comments or Instagram me at Dr. J Rutland. I'll be sure to answer your questions and we can discuss here in the future. Again, thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. Hopefully I'll see you next time.